Stand and worship together. Jesus. 
Good morning, church. It's great to be with you on this Sunday morning. Let me draw some attention to some of the things that are happening here in the life of the church. (coughs) This coming Wednesday is the beginning of Lent. It is Ash Wednesday. We will have a worship service here um, in the evening at 7 o'clock with the dispersing of ashes. And we will also disperse ashes with a short service at 1130 a.m. on Wednesday. So that's this coming Wednesday. We are going to be starting a new study in Wednesday with our study groups, too. One begins on March 9th, and one begins on Monday at March 14th at 10 a.m., and also looking at the possibility of doing an online um, study as well. March um, support, our troops collection is Pringles, Hard Candy, and Tube Sauce. Our grief support group um, continues this coming Saturday, and that will meet at 10 o'clock here at the church. The other thing to let you know is we have youth group tonight um, at 6 uh, p.m. The the youth group of the Grow Kids continues to to go at 6 p.m. as well. Any other announcements that I need to draw attention to? We have a talent show coming up on March 13th as 
well. Um, and what time is that here? Five o'clock. Um, and that's a Sunday night. Um, any other announcements? Well, with that said, you may be seated. Um, and we'll call the kids up for a children's song. everybody. So today I brought a beautifully wrapped package and I bet you can tell by looking at it that there's a gift inside. So how many of you like to receive gifts? I'm sure you all like to receive gifts. It's a lot of fun, isn't it? Well, what if I told you I was going to give you this gift, but it was going to cost you five dollars? Would it be a gift then? No, it wouldn't be a gift because a gift is free. It doesn't cost anything. Yes, but a gift doesn't cost anything. It doesn't come with any conditions. You just accept the gift. That's why it's a gift. Well, I'm here today to tell you about the most amazing gift ever that we could ever receive, and that is the gift of eternal life, living forever and ever with God in his heavenly kingdom someday. And the Bible tells us in John chapter 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, that means should not die, but they should have everlasting life, living forever in heaven with God in his heavenly kingdom someday. And that by far is the greatest gift that we could ever receive. So when you get a gift here on earth, whether it's for Christmas or for your birthday, it's never polite to ask how much that gift costs, is it? But in this case, we know that the gift costs a lot because it costs God his one and only son. So think for a second just how much God loves us. He sacrificed his one and only son so that we could have eternal life. And think how much Jesus loves us to die on the cross so that we could have eternal life. What could we ever do? How could we ever thank God for this incredible, indescribable gift? Well, you know what's amazing when you ask Jesus into your heart? You know what happens? The Holy Spirit comes inside of you and enters inside of you. And it's at that moment that God blesses us with these spiritual gifts that we've been talking for the whole month of February about. So our way to say thank you to God for this incredible gift of eternal life is to use the spiritual gift that he's given us uniquely to do his kingdom work here on earth. Because the whole reason that we are here is so that we can bring others into a relationship with the Lord, okay? So the way that um, we want them to all come, because God's desire, his desire, is that every single one of us in this room, and not just in this room, but everyone in the world that's living and breathing, and even the people that are yet to be born, he wants them to be in his heavenly kingdom. And that's how we do it. And if we do it properly, and if we're working together, like we talked about that puzzle piece, and we're all united as one, working together in love, the world is going to see God's love in us. And then they are going to receive that gift of eternal life. And the Holy Spirit's going to come into them. And then God is going to bless them with spiritual gifts. And that kingdom is just going to keep getting bigger and bigger. So let's use our spiritual gifts for his glory. So let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your spiritual gifts that you've given us. Help us to use them for your glory so that others can have a relationship with you. And also thank you for sacrificing your son on the cross for our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. stand and worship together this morning.
know, during those first two songs, I couldn't couldn't help uh, remember something that's been stuck in my head all week. Is uh, a couple weeks ago, I went down to Charleston and down through Savannah and into Florida, and just a little road trip for myself. And I was uh, I decided the last day there because I was going to try to get home not super late. So I decided I'm going to go to the beach at sunrise in February in 30 degree weather. Um, things I do for photography. Uh, but I remember sitting there and I was the first person on the beach and there's this old boardwalk and I almost fell and hurt myself and and uh, it was pitch black so I got my phone light out and I was trying to see and I got to the beach and all of a sudden you could just rip. And I got there before, probably about half an hour before the sun actually crested the horizon but I was sitting there and I was just looking and seeing and just waiting and, and you could see the sky it just started getting blue or different shades of blue and the world was just silent and then all of a sudden the sun comes up and everything wakes up and I'm not the only per crazy person on the beach anymore and uh, I just kind of think about the overwhelming nature of God and how I'll stand there and I'll wait for just the simplest thing to happen but it's just the most magnificent thing that can happen and and we're talking about spiritual gifts, and we're talking about seeking and growing and, and looking for something more. And I just remind, put myself back on that beach, and I'm just waiting and waiting, and God finally reveals himself. He shows who I am and who I, what talents he has given me and what gifts he has given me. And I think that's kind of what Jeff's trying to really do through this experience is he's trying to put us all on that beach and just wait and look and just kind of introspectively see and let God shine light on who we are and where he's calling us to. Oh, my God. 
may be seated. One of the things that um, that I am doing, that pastors have to do uh, in our conference, is take continue education. And this past week, I was up at Olmstead Manor for my class on um, on leading like Jesus. And uh, one of the one of the people that I really look up to in our conference, who is retired now, um, but still working with the United Methodist Foundation, is a guy named. Joe Patterson. He used to be our DS in the Erie Meadville district. And he stood up and he was talking to us and he said, you know, one of the things that I would do, I never did as a pastor, and I never saw a church do this, um, but I would do it now, is lead my congregation in a spiritual gift assessment. And I wanted to stand up and say, we're doing that. But um, it it was really exciting to find out that we were on a path that maybe it's going to take us to a better place and uh, a place that might uh, help us live more flourishing lives. If you haven't taken the the test, you can find it on our website. If you're afraid that we're going to ask you to do something here at the church by taking that and giving us your results, we'd like to see the results, but just take it um, and see where you're at. Because I I can guarantee you that if you would live into some of these gifts, that you might find yourself blessed with. Um, you would find life and life abundantly. This morning we have uh, with us uh, one of our conference specialists, uh, Tawny Betts. Uh, she is with the Erie Meadville um, and also the Kane District um, doing um, this kind of thing, leading churches to, to discover more of a potential that they might have. Um, and so we're excited to have her here. She's from Warren. She goes to Warren first. And um, she's going to speak with us a little bit this morning. But let's join together um, with a word of prayer, and then we'll look at our scripture. Lord God, as we spend some time together, we just pray that you would bless it, that you would bless uh, Tawny as she gives us her message, our message, your message. Lord, and as we celebrate that this morning, we pray that you would help us not to be distracted from the Spirit, but that we would live into what you have prepared for us. And we pray this in your name. <coughs> Amen. So the scripture passage this morning is from 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. The end of all things <coughs> is near. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. As faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms, if anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength that God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen.
Good morning. It is a joy to be here with you this morning. As Pastor Jeff said, I'm Connie Betts, and I am the Regional Coordinator of Spiritual Formation for the Erie, Meadville, and Kane Districts. My ministry partner, Reverend Megan Miles, and I engage with churches at their request to help with a variety of things. Um, some of the things we've done so far, we've done spiritual gifts assessment and teaching with other churches. We helped one church, uh, their pastor's retiring, and he wanted them to do some goal setting that he wasn't directing, so we helped them with some of that. So we're here to, this morning to talk about spiritual gifts, to just continue on the theme that you've been using. Will you pray with me? Loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. So I really like to cook, and sometimes I'll make something for dinner based on what I want to have for lunch the next day. So one night I made a fantastic shrimp fried rice. And since the kids weren't home, there was going to be plenty left over for lunch the next day. But the next day when I got home from my morning meetings and my errands, the container of the shrimp fried rice was gone. So I asked my teenage son, did you eat that container of shrimp and rice? And he said, oh yeah, it was really good. And I was so disappointed because I was really looking forward to that lunch all morning. But I learned my lesson. So now, if I want leftovers the next day, I put a portion in a small container, and then I put it in the vegetable drawer because nobody ever looks in there. But that kind of backfired on me last week. Um, I put a container of chicken and rice in the, in the vegetable drawer, and then I forgot about it. And then Monday, I was opening, I opened the, the vegetable drawer to get some carrots and found the leftovers. And then I counted back. I realized that they had been in there over a week, which is a little too long for me to eat leftover chicken. So I was disappointed that in my attempt to keep all the good stuff for myself, I deprived everyone and wasted the food and not made good use of it. So you've been focusing on and learning about spiritual gifts the past month, and several of you um, have taken the assessment to see what, what your spiritual gifts are. And I've listened to Pastor Jeff's messages so that I wasn't repeating exactly what he's been saying, and I've caught most of his morning messages as well. He asked me to use the verses from 1 Peter that he read as the theme for this morning. And, but there's so much packed into those five verses, um, I had a hard time trying to decide what should be the focus. I kept highlighting, like on my first page, different words are highlighted. Um, but then, then I used some biblical meditation, the spiritual discipline of biblical meditation, to try to see what the focus should be. When we hear the word meditation, we sometimes think of the Eastern practice of emptying your mind. But if you're going to empty your mind, you need to fill it with something good. And that's the purpose of biblical meditation. So I use the Lexio Divina method, where you read a passage over and over, slowly, and pausing frequently to become aware of what particular words are becoming meaningful to you at that time. Let me read the passage again, and I'll stop when I get to the phrase that stood out to me. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace. There it is. Faithful stewards of God's grace. Am I a faithful steward of God's grace? I had to look up the exact definition of a steward. I like to look up definitions, so sometimes it helps me clarify things. So Merriam-Webster defines a steward as one employed in a large household or estate to manage domestic concerns such as the supervision of servants, collection of rents, and keeping of accounts, or one who actively directs affairs. A good steward realizes that what they are overseeing or supervising does not really belong to them. We are to be stewards of God's grace by using our gifts in God's estate or his kingdom to ensure that it functions the way God desires. None of us, not any one of us, not even our pastors, not your pastor, not my pastor, has all of the spiritual gifts. So we need each other. We aren't meant to be Christians alone. We're not supposed to do this all by ourselves. What I've been hearing from the congregations we've been working with 
is that people are hungry for meaningful relationships. Think about how you could use your spiritual gifts to foster genuine relationships. And I've talked a lot about stewardship lately in the work that I've been doing, mainly in the context of putting our church buildings to good use for our community. I work with churches in the Erie, Meadville, and Kane districts, and because all of the churches in the Kane district where I live are rural churches, I've done a lot of reading on rural churches and how to think of vitality in a rural congregation, because numbers doesn't cut it. In his book, Reclaiming Rural, Building Thriving Rural Congregations, Pastor Alan Stanton says that one sign of vitality in a rural church is when the church practices good stewardship, not only of its finances, but also of its building, its resources, and services. Good stewardship of a church building would be inviting others, such as scouts, 4-H, or addiction recovery groups to meet in the building. A few examples of good stewardship of buildings and property are occurring in and near my town. Back in September, we worked with Pittsfield Otterbein Church, and they have a modern little playground on their church property, fenced only for safety purposes. And the sign on the fence reads, Pittsfield Community Playground. And indeed, it is the only playground in the 55 square miles of Pittsfield Township. There are playgrounds down in Youngsville, a few miles down the road. And in Youngsville, First United Methodist Church there just converted their education wing into a senior center because there wasn't one in their town. They're right in the middle of town and it's a great, it's a great location. At their consecration and open house last month, the pastor told me that the very first day when they went to open the door of the new center, there were four people, not church members, waiting to come in. The church I attend recently converted a room into a counseling office for a newly licensed Christian counselor to begin his practice rent free. There's great need for counselors right now and he's really already stepped up when our community was in a time of crisis a couple months ago. These churches are serving their communities by being good stewards of their building. But a steward of God's grace? Am I being a good steward of God's grace? What exactly is grace? That could, that could be a whole other sermon, really. Um, but the United Methodist Book of Discipline defines grace as the undeserved, unmerited, and loving action of God in human existence through the, the ever-present Holy Spirit, which is a whole mouthful. A few years ago, I was leading a junior high class, and I was trying to understand if they were absorbing anything that I was saying, if they'd learned anything. So at the beginning of one session, I asked if anyone could remember or knew what the definition of grace was. And one 13-year-old boy thought for a second. He said, well, it's kind of like a reward you didn't earn. Pretty good understanding of grace for a 13-year-old boy, a reward you didn't earn. The spiritual gifts we receive were not earned, but given to us by God for the work of his kingdom. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 reads, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Our spiritual gifts aren't meant just for us, but to serve others for God's church. I even feel this way um, about the talents that I have, which are different than spiritual gifts. You can develop and work on a talent. Um, one of my talents is photography, and I feel blessed that I have equipment that allows me to practice and work at this gift. And my favorite thing to photograph is people. I love being at an event that marks a milestone or a special time in someone's life. And I love to take meaningful photos and bless people by sharing the photos with them. The photos I've put up here are some of the times that I've been asked to take photos for people. I have great photos of my own family, but I receive just as much joy from being able to capture important moments and share the photos with others. Like Pastor Jeff does with his art, he could just draw for himself and decorate his own home with his artwork but he enjoys sharing that talent with others as part of his ministry. We are meant to share our gifts with others, and when we use our gifts, we will feel energized and fulfilled. We have a responsibility to use our gifts for the common good, for each other. And if we don't use our gifts, it's like the leftovers that I wanted to keep just for myself but ended up wasting. When we don't share our gifts, nobody benefits and everyone goes away empty. The following are some important things to remember about spiritual gifts. The, the gifts are received, they're not earned, and we can't buy them, like Tiffany told the kids, we can't buy a gift, it's not, then it's not a gift. We are commanded to use our gift 
to be faithful stewards of God's grace. Gifts are designed to serve one another, to build up God's church. Gifts are a stewardship from God, less of a privilege than a responsibility. We have a responsibility to use our gifts, a stewardship. Gifts come in a wide variety of expressions, and they don't necessarily present themselves in the same way in each believer. Don't compare yourselves with others. We all use our gifts in different ways. And the ultimate purpose of all spiritual gifts is that God will be glorified. So, what if we took the assessment but don't know how to go, go about using our spiritual gifts? Where do we start? So there are some ways to confirm your gifts. Number one, listen to your own heart. God's will is often revealed through our inner desires and passions. We'll have excitement and joy for serving in our gifted area. It won't all look the same, though, remember. If you have the gift of teaching, it might be for teaching adults, or maybe it's for children, or maybe you're that rare breed who connects really well with junior high students. And even within teaching, there are various styles. I've worked with teachers who are great lecturers, but I kind of do a question and answer style when I teach. One isn't necessarily better than the other, just different. Number two, listen to Christians who are closest to you. Getting the counsel of other believers is important. Seek out mature Christians who know you and ask their opinion. This emphasizes the importance of being part of an authentic, committed community of believers. At Warren First, we have covenant discipleship groups, which is an accountability group where we hold each other accountable to use our gifts, different as they are. My covenant group would be the first people I would seek counsel with to confirm my gifts or about anything else that I felt called to do. Maybe you're a part of a study group or a Sunday school class that you could turn to for confirmation of your gifts. And if you aren't part of a group like that, maybe you could join one or even start one. Number three, try out the gift. For example, if you think you have the gift of exhortation, which is really encouragement, you could write and send several encouraging cards and letters to people. If you have the gift of mercy, maybe make a visit to someone who's down or not feeling well. Examine the impact of your efforts because spiritual gifts are designed to benefit others, so you should see positive results. Also, pay attention to how you feel and how you respond when you serve through your gifts. Are you energized or are you drained? There's a difference between a good, satisfied, tired and being emotionally exhausted after you do something. Serving within your gifts will energize you. And number four, the key to, keep, to identifying and using your spiritual gifts is prayer, prayer, and more prayer. Be sure that you spend time listening to God and not just talking. The Lord will lead you to accurate discoveries of your gifts if you allow God to guide your endeavors. The definition of a steward that I read earlier included synonyms, and one synonym for a steward is a servant. If we replace steward with servant, the verse we read earlier says this, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful servants of God's grace in its various forms. So my challenge to you would be to take some time to think about your gifts and pray about your gifts. Talk them over with others in the church, with the, the other believers, and with your pastor. And then look. Look around your community. Look around your friend group. How could you use your gifts to minister to others? And the most important challenge I have for you is to listen. Listen to the others around you. Listen to your heart. And listen to discern what God is calling you to do with your gifts. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Amen. As we take some time to pray this morning, is there any prayer concerns that we need to be lifting up? Any joys? Um, my joy is that uh, I got to listen to a message this morning. So, so that was a joy. Thank you, Tony, for that. Um, Amber, how's your mom doing? We can be praying for Amber's mom as she adjusts to this new way of living. Um, anything else that we can be lifting up? Amy.
So we want to be praying for Sylvia as she goes through a struggle in her life. Ken. The people of the Ukraine, you know, there's many struggles there. I have um, a couple that I know that are living there who have been um, uh, taken to Albania to live. Um, they since it's th And they said that it is very ugly there. Um, and so we can be praying for those folks. I, too, have a friend, as, as you do, Amy, that is going through a, a, a real struggle in his life. And I don't know exactly what it is. Um, he's a really good friend of mine, and uh, he will share it with me eventually. But I just want to lift him up in prayer as well. Good friend from seminary. Um, anything else that we want to be praying? Joys, concerns? Let's take some time to pray. Lord God, we thank you for this time to look at our spiritual gifts. Lord, we thank you for the ability to share your kingdom with others. And as we do so, Lord, may we be like a butterfly, transformed into beauty. We thank you for that opportunity. Lord, there are many ways to express our thanks to you this morning, and we just lift up praises to you for who you are. Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. You are Prince of Peace, Wonderful Counselor, Everlasting Father, Almighty God. <clears throat> we thank you for the work on the cross, and we ask for your forgiveness for the times that we are distracted, the times that we sin. And Lord, there are some things that are on our hearts this morning. We want to pray for those who might be struggling. Pray for my friend. I pray for Sylvia. Lord, we lift them up. We pray for Karen as she is struggling with a, a new way of life. And we lift her up. I pray for her family as well. Lord, uh, I lift up praises for my niece announcing that she's going to be getting married. And I'm, I'm excited for that for her. And Lord, we also want to pray for those folks who are struggling this morning, living in other countries. Um, pray for the people of the Ukraine and lift them up to you. Father, um, we want to pray for those who may not be doing well with their emotions today. We lift them up. We pray for those who are not doing well financially. We pray for them. Lord, we pray for those who are caregivers. Lord, I lift them up and I pray that you would give them the strength that they need, whether they are working as, as a caregiver for their job or they're taking care of a loved one at home. We just pray for that. And Lord, as we pray all these things this morning, we thank you for the way that you've taught us how to pray. We pray that prayer together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. One of the ways that we can lift up our praises is by, by meditation and to give thanks to God. And so I want to invite Jen up this morning to, to play our offertory for us this morning. We're going to skip the one that is on our PowerPoint and um, celebrate the fact that Jen is here to play for us. And we're going to take some time, and I invite you to take some time this morning, to lift up your praises and to thank God for what he's given us this morning. Let me remind you that our offering plates are by the doors if you feel called to be a part of our offering. But let's take some time this morning and give thanks and praise to God for what he's given us. Thank you. 
pray with me? Lord God, we thank you for this offering that we receive today. And we pray that you would bless it and use it so that we could show the kingdom to our world. We just pray this simply in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and respond together. So may God continue to bless you and keep you. May God continue to shine his face upon you and give you peace. May God lift his countenance up before you. And let us go forth, folks, with the attitude of sharing our gifts and finding peace and flourishing life therein. Amen. Amen.